The European Central Bank has left the main refinancing rates unchanged at 4.5% this time. And in its commentary, the bank has said that the high rates have had a dampening impact on demand, which is helping rein in inflation. Then you've got the other big picture, the macro print from the U.S. And uh, this is about the GDP. It gives us a sense of where the U.S. economy is heading. The U.S. economy has grown at the rate of 3.3% in the last quarter of 2023. And this is a slowdown from the previous quarter. Sequentially, it is a slowdown. But annualized growth has come in at 4.9%. But let's listen in first to what the ECB president had to say at the time that they were announcing that decision to hold interest rates where they are. Christine Lagarde had this to say. We are determined to ensure that inflation returns to our 2% medium-term target in a timely manner. Based on our current assessment, we consider that the key ECB interest rates are at levels that maintained for a sufficiently long duration will make a substantial contribution to this goal. Our future decisions will ensure that our policy rates will be set at sufficiently restrictive levels for as long as necessary. The consensus around that ta the table of the Governing Council this morning was that it was premature to discuss um, rate cuts. The ECB's rate decision, you heard Christine Lagarde uh, speak about it and uh, the US GDP print as well. Let's discuss this and what this really means for Indian equities going ahead from here. To do this, Invesco's global macro strategist for Europe, Middle East and Africa, Ornab Das, is joining us from London. Welcome to India, India tonight, uh, Ornab Das. It's a pleasure always to get your perspective. Uh, first, uh, you know, how do the US GDP and jobless claims numbers, how do these play out against market expectations? And how does it address these lingering concerns that exist about a slowing economy after the multiple rate hikes, which was more or less expected, and economists were uh, sure that we are going to see a decline in growth in the U.S. economy? Well, thanks for having me. It's, uh, it's good to be back, as always. Um, look, I think, um, you know, the U.S. economy um, and much of the world economy is proving much more resilient um, to rate hikes than most people had expected. And I think the, um, the Q4 numbers from the U.S. Um, continue to bear that out. Although there are signs of slowing, um, the underlying growth rate um, for all of 2023 has been, uh, you know, for the U.S. significantly higher than expected. If you roll back the tape to the beginning of 2023, this time last year, um, the narrative in the market, the, con the consensus, I guess, was that China was going to take off because they had just reopened. The U.S. was going to go down into recession because they had been tightening after the inflation surge. Um, and Europe would be somewhere in between. Um, well, actually, what's happened is that China has been relatively soft. Europe has been teetering on the brink of recession. And the U.S. Um, has been performing relatively well. Um, so I think when you put all of that together, what it suggests is, you know, sort of more of the same, right? That the, um, the Fed and the ECB continue to hold back for a little while longer before starting to do some rate cuts um, to ensure that there isn't going to be another reacceleration in growth and inflation, especially in the U.S., like there has been a couple of times in, um, in the U.K. Um, and that um, China, on the other side of the world, uh, you know, is easing and will continue to ease, right? And I think that's the object lesson here. We have the big economies developed and emerging, you know, the West and China, um, India as well, you know, going in somewhat different directions, right? So I think it's a, it's a very ripe environment for investing with, a, with an eye towards diversification. So for bearing on Abdas, uh, is this American macro print going to affect the Fed's decision to pivot and start cutting interest rates this year? Because like you mentioned, uh, we've seen them all hold interest rates now as far as uh, the banking regulators are concerned around the world. And global markets have had a sense of unease, at least about the Fed, because of the uncertainty around uh, the pivot and when it could actually come. Yes, that's true. I mean, I think they have been, um, you know, sort of speaking out of both sides of their mouth to, to some extent. Um, you, you know, you might say trying to um, to move financial conditions this way and that um, by verbally, you know, talking up the pivot or, or you know, sort of withdrawing a little bit. Um, but I think that's actually, in a way, maybe reasonable given how fast financial conditions, at least, you know, the risk premia uh, in markets have been moving, right? Prices have been moving around quite a bit. Um, on the data as well as on the Fed signals. 
Um, and, and throughout the process, right, the market has been fighting the Fed. Um, you know, we're all brought up not to fight the Fed, right? But um, actually, the market has been fighting the Fed in the sense that um, it's most of the time it's been expecting, um, you know, the Fed to have to ease quite significantly. Um, it's sort of, you know, banking on a return to the so-called new normal, whereas to me, it looks like we're going back a bit more towards what I call the old ordinary, right? Somewhat higher uh, growth, somewhat higher inflation, significantly tighter labor markets and, and better, more robust um, wage growth, especially at the bottom end of the income distribution, sustaining growth and sustaining consumption in the U.S. and, and much of the West. Um, and, you know, therefore, the Fed has to be kind of, uh, you know, quite careful in order not to go too far in tightening financial conditions through monetary, monetary tightening and not allow financial conditions to ease too much, less growth and inflation, both yes. um, reaccelerate once again. Yeah, so that balancing act is important. Uh, but where do you expect capital flows to go now? Where does India stand among the attractive markets of the world for investment growth against the backdrop? of uh, this kind of American macro data, Europe's call to stay put on interest rates right now, and the current valuations as well that you see of Indian equities? Well, I think there's no question on the last point that you make. Um, you know, Indian equities are extremely rich, um, although you know, it has to be said, people have been saying that for many months, many quarters now, and um, I think you know, there, there are flows into India from the rest of the world, as you say, flows into the Indian equity markets um, from domestic investors, um, including retail investors through financial inclusion and financial deepening. Um, so from the kind of point of view of flows, I think you know, that's going to be supportive. I think um, the global macro environment is also going to be supportive, notwithstanding the idea that the Fed may hold back. I mean, our view is you know, the Fed is going to cut and possibly be the first one to cut to do these maintenance cuts. Um, probably more like mid-year than in the first half of the year. Um, and that expectation, you know, even though it's somewhat later than the market is wanting to price, that expectation will continue to keep the dollar relatively soft, right? I think we've probably, um, you know, for some time seen the, the peak in the dollar and a softer dollar with lower interest rates um, in the U.S., eventually in Western Europe, um, and in many parts of emerging markets, including including China itself, as we've been discussing, um, that should promote a recovery in the second half of the year, right? A reacceleration in growth is maybe a little less concerning uh, when it comes to inflation. And that should be a pretty good world for financial flows um, into emerging markets in general, and in the, including India in particular. We'll see how it pans out, especially with the bond yields and how they move from here. Thanks very much, Arnab Das, for joining us with your perspective on India tonight. And even as uh, Arnab was uh, sharing with us his thoughts on uh, how this is going to impact the markets, I'm looking at Wall Street right now, and the indice is there. The Dow Jones is up around three-tenths of a percentage point as we speak. Uh, I'm looking at it at uh, the current stage where it's at. Uh, we're looking at a move up around four-tenths of a percent, so we need to update that. The Nasdaq is up around half a percentage point and the S&P 500 is up as well, about half a percentage point. So that's where we are. Uh, the Dow Jones is currently trading around the 37,940 levels. We'll keep tracking that. For the moment, we will take a very quick breather on this edition of India Tonight. Much more coming up on the flip side of this break. We'll talk about French President Macron's visit to India and what kind of deals could be signed there. That's coming up in a moment. Do stay with us.